In this presentation, I would like to show an optimization work done for hardware flows in the OBS user land data path. I will begin by describing the context of this optimization, what is the impact and why it was necessary. Then I will present the architecture change, some notes taken during the development, and finally, the results. So let's begin with the current hardware flow process in New Zealand. OVS is a multi-layer switch. It is often represented in three stages, with three packet classifiers mapping packet matches to processing actions. Each packet goes through the switch layers, one after the other. Whenever a match is found, the associated actions are executed. The first stage is the exact match cache, which matches packets against fully specified flows. The match is simple and fast, but the cache is quickly saturated. The second stage is the data pass classifier, where flow specifications support wildcards to describe megaflows. It implements double space search using four subtables covering increasingly specific flow matches. The four subtables must all miss one after the other for the search to fail. The last stage is the open flow layer, where the rules are executed as specified by the user. OBS will attempt to collapse the processing pipeline described by the open flow configuration into megaflows that will be inserted into the data pass classifier. Each layer increases the cost of processing the packet, time spent, power, and memory usage. To help packet processing, Somnic offers a programmable packet classifier running directly on its hardware. This classifier implements a subset of the matches and actions supported by the data pass classifier, but it offers accelerated double space search, meaning that it supports the same wildcard matching directly in hardware. When a flow is offloaded, it reduces the processing latency, improves throughput, and liberates CPU cycles. This is valid, however, only as long as the hardware classifier can remain synchronized with the data pass classifier. The focus of this work is on the relationship between the two wildcard classifiers. The exact match cache is an optimization for the initial lookup phase and is not relevant in this context. So it is disabled for the purpose of this development and the performance test done afterward. The hardware classifier accelerates a subset of the megaflows present in the data pass classifier. For those megaflows, it is crucial that it remains as close as possible to its software counterpart. Any divergence means that packets could be incorrectly processed by the hardware until the synchronization is completed. Thus, the process of updating the hardware classifier of synchronizing the two is critical to the switch operations. One of the first objectives of this work is to qualify this process. How quickly and how often does it happen, and how much of a strain does it put on the system resources? As a first step, let's take a closer look when DPDK ports are involved. The data pass classifiers will receive updates from PMD threads after executing the open flow layer and finding a mega flow to insert. Revalidator threads will continuously iterate on each flow, possibly updating them for example after Mac learning or deleting them after some inactivity timeout. After this update, a request is sent to a separate offload thread. This part has been removed from the data path in PMD threads to avoid slowing them down. All update producers write to a single shared queue. Each of the megaflow flowed is assigned a unique mark that will serve to identify this megaflow within the hardware. Two maps are updated to find flows from a mark and find a mark from a megaflow. Then the offload provider of the port, in that case DPDK, will execute the request for addition, modification or deletion, applying it to the hardware and keeping track of offload handles for future references. In this process, several points will be contended by multiple threads. The first is the offload queue which will be used by NPMDs plus M revalidators and one offload thread. Then the data pass port map is locked to exclude any change to the ports during the update, for example, port addition or deletion. Finally, locks are taken when accessing each port, as for DPDK in particular, the API was not thread safe until one year ago. So this is the current state of the process, and this is the optimization starting point. Now let's examine how this can be improved. 
First, we need to identify how we want to optimize, according to which metric we will measure an improvement in the synchronization. I choose two metrics. The first is the latency of the update. Time is measured between the moment the update was done in the DataPass classifier and the moment the same update has been enacted in the hardware as far as the offload provider is concerned. The second metric is to count the number of elements waiting in the offload queue. Those elements each consume 3.4 kilobytes of memory and will increase in number if the offload thread is not fast enough. Currently, neither of those metrics are available, so we are running blind. The first step was to add them as they will serve to measure progress. The optimization starts by reorganizing the architecture to reduce contention on locks. The first lock removed is on the offload queue. It is a multi-producer single consumer setup. Faster queues can be used that will be obstruction free and designed for this setup. This lock is taken in the data path running on the PMD threads after a classifier update. Removing it also removes the contention between the affine PMDs and non-affine revalidator and offload threads. Those can be preempted, leaving the PMD threads waiting while their reserved core is idle. Next, the DPDK port locks taken are not necessary since the last DPDK LTS release. The RTE flow API has been updated to be thread safe. Drivers that can benefit from parallelism won't lock and others that cannot will be protected internally by the DPDK layer itself. But this is only the first steps. There is a many to one relationship between PMDs, revalidators and the offload thread. Sometimes this thread becomes saturated. Additionally, the port map lock is not strictly necessary during offload updates. The port map itself is not modified. A read-write lock allows making the distinction between critical sections requiring only a stable port map and sections that will modify the map requiring mutual exclusion. Currently, reconfigurations in the data path that do not modify the port map can halt the offload update while it is not necessary. So switching to a read-write lock allows both to reduce the number of events that will block offload updates and offers the possibility to do multiple offload updates in parallel, if one thread was saturated. For parallelism, the data managed during offload updates must be divided to allow current concurrent workload. Megaflows are dispatched according to their unique ID between the K offload threads. That way, the same offload thread manages the same megaflow whether the update comes from a PMD or a revalidator. Offload metadata such as mark mappings must be updated whenever a megaflow is deleted. Ensuring that a megaflow is processed always by the same thread allows dividing the metadata between multiple threads. Updates to those maps then do not require any locks. The mark allocator currently used was found not to scale properly with multiple threads and to be generally inefficient for this context. A new mark allocator has been designed and implemented. However, the global offload table becomes shared by multiple threads and becomes a source of contention. To reduce this contention, the global table is divided per port. There is no reason to share the offload handles between the port and the CMAP overhead is due. This is the current state of the series proposed for integration. The PMD threads divide their data core-wise. Updates are serialized and dispatched megaflow-wise toward the offload threads. Those threads then apply those updates toward data structure distributed port-wise. The core-wise and port-wise divisions of data are forced by hardware constraints. The megaflow division is done that way to simplify processing megaflow metadata. The MPSCQ allows a loose transform between core-wise and megaflow-wise. However, the other side is still contended. We will see that this is not currently an issue, and if it became one, it can easily be fixed, as I will discuss later. Now let's take a closer look into some not worthy parts. I said earlier that the offload marks are generated using an inefficient allocator, in particular in multi-thread setup. Marks are allocated using the IGPOOL module. 
This allocator has additional features such as allowing the insertion of arbitrary IDs to make them available for allocation or ensuring the lowest available ID is always allocated. Those features make this allocator extremely slow in some cases and they are not strictly necessary for the specific mark case. It is, however, not possible to fix those performance issues without impacting those features and thus other systems relying on them. So a new allocator has been written that relaxes some properties. A micro benchmark compares the new allocator against the previous one. We can see that the previous one does not scale well with multiple threads and that it is comparatively slow. The current graph shows an artificial best case where IDs are allocated continuously until the pool depletion, so it is not realistic. The second case is the inverse, continuous deletion until all IDs in the pool are once again made available. So this is also far removed from reality. A more interesting case is mixing allocations and deletions. In this test, an ID is allocated, then freed, then reallocated until the pool is depleted. This is once again artificial because the ID just allocated is the one immediately freed. The old pool is less stable with higher violence in the time taken to complete the test. We can see that the new pool in blue degrades when going from one to multiple threads, but the pool scales afterward. Adding more threads reduces the time spent allocating to the 1 million elements. The performance is also more stable. A final test is to allocate a new ID, free at random any that was previously allocated, then allocate once again a new ID until depletion. So this is the more realistic case between the four that were used. IDs have a low chance being freed in reverse order from their allocation. This case, however, shows pathological behavior from the current ID pool. Its performance were lower but manageable with the artificial cases, but in this one, the timeout of 10 seconds of the test is systematically reached in all configurations. This is the behavior that I was not able to improve in this allocator without sacrificing critical features needed by other users of the module. So this motivated the development of the new pool. We can see that its performance is stable. A second interesting point is changing the offload queue. The multi-producer single consumer case is pretty common and faster alternatives than using a locked queue exists. Additionally, it is important to note that the thread model is heterogeneous due to the obvious userland architecture. PMD threads are affined to a physical core, while revalidators and offload threads are not. Thus, we are forced to either use fair locks or use a lockless structure. This structure could be used in other parts of OVS with a similar thread model. The test here measures the time taken for 1 million elements to be passed through the queue between n producer threads and one consumer. So the first column shows the time spent passing 1 million messages between one producer and one consumer. We can note that the MPSC queue is comparable to a linked list protected by a spring lock. It is much faster than the list protected by mutex. However, it is also more fair than pinlock, and we can also see that it scales slightly with additional threads. The time spent in this test diminishes slightly as the workload is divided between more threads. So let's look at the result from this optimization. I use the Bluefield 2 SmartNIC. It has low power ARM cores that are used to run OVS, helped by the acceleration provided by the hardware classifier. The offload process is CPU bound in a way. It is also impacted by cache size and memory bandwidth. As such, it is also important to consider the smaller and slower CPUs for the OVS datapath architecture. Four PMD threads are used and revalidators are left with the default configuration, which will create three revalidators in this context. The traffic being sent, it, um, being sent is varying in a way that will trigger many datapath classifier updates and will create continuous updates to the hardware classifier. Finally, the latency uses an exponential moving average to give more weight to the measured latency in the latest offload updates. This first graph shows the baseline. No change was made to the architecture at this point. 
The only difference from upstream master is that statistics were collected for the defined metrics and made available. The latency is given in milliseconds and hovers around 800. Enabling the optimizations described, the latency is brought down to an average of 20 milliseconds. In this graph, I kept the same scale for comparison with the previous graph. It is, there, it is the same measure, but I zoom the graph 10 times to highlight some behavior. There are still spikes in the queue, and as offloads are waiting, the latency increases. Then, a second thread is added to manage offloads in parallel. Once again here, the graph keeps the same scale as the previous one. We can see that the process is more stable. Zoom, zooming in, the average is between 4 and 6 milliseconds, with spikes sometimes. Overall, the latency was reduced a hundredfold. It has gone down from 800 milliseconds to less than 8 milliseconds. There is still room for improvement, however. As I described earlier, some contention remains due to the mismatch between megaflow-wise and port-wise data division. If higher rates of updates are needed, this contention can become problematic. I haven't hit that case with upstream of yes, which is why the current series stopped there. However, as offloads are improved, more updates should be emitted. If we reach a point where contention is an issue, this can help. So to recap, here is the current series architecture. The chance will be to divide each map per port and per thread. It will remove all locks except the port map lock as the cost of, at the cost of some overhead. This is expected to help if there are many ports being used by OBS and contention has a visible impact on performance. In this model, essentially the offload handles are dispatched both port-wise and megaflow-wise to erase all contention. This change is not con currently considered, but I wanted to show that this proposed architecture is amenable to solve this issue if it occurs. Another improvement is on the memory usage. Flow matches are very large sparse structure. A minified representation exists in OBS that might be used, or even better, the match could directly be written in the offload provider format by the initiator. Also, catch accesses could be improved by batching the updates. With very large flows, parsing the match and actions consume many catch lines. And that's it for me. Thanks for watching. All right. Uh, thank you, uh, Gaetan, uh, for your talk and your work. Uh, if you'd like to join me in video, then uh, we'll uh, have a chance to answer some questions and uh, discuss the, uh, the the talk and the work. Uh, welcome. Hello. Hi. Can so, you hear me? Uh, Yes, I can hear you uh, just oh, fine. Uh, so I have a question already from Frode Nordahl, who says, I know your talk is DPDK specific, so apologies if this is off topic. Does the OVS kernel uh, or TC offload code paths benefit from this work as well? Well, um, not really. For, first, for the OVS kernel, uh, not at all. And uh, some of the changes described there were applied uh, to uh, the user on data path in general. So there for the TC offload uh, that might apply. And the TC uh, provider was already thread safe, uh, unlike uh, DPDK. So some of the locking that we saw there uh, in the architecture were done only uh, due to DPDK and TC can just uh, benefit from them. But uh, yeah, the, uh, the TC layer has not been uh, modified at all to, to be accelerated. So uh, I will not say that uh, right now it has benefited from, from this change. All right, uh, that's a good answer. Uh, so uh, Maxime Coquelin says, great talk, Gaitan. So uh, you can take that as a bit of cheerleading. Uh, and there's okay. one more question uh, in the uh, uh, in the Q&A uh, from Hemel Shah, who asks, uh, what's the plan to upstream these changes? Yeah, so the series, as it has been presented there, has been uh, proposed one year ago, actually. And uh, since then, it has been uh, well reviewed uh, a few times. There has been discussions about, uh, in particular, about the, the ID uh, allocator uh, pool. And um, 
So it, it is currently on the mailing list uh, and it seems that uh, multiple people uh, think that it is a good change. So I think it has a good chance to be integrated at some point, but it is still on the mailing list and uh, being uh, tested uh, mostly and reviewed. Hey, I'm, I'm glad to hear that it's uh, uh, being uh, tested and reviewed. So uh, we have another question from Elko uh, who says, uh, does this increase the risk of out of order packets? as the first TCP packet will be sent out before the flow is offloaded. Um, and he's asking uh, because this was brought up when discussing uh, asynchronous offloading of TC rules. Um, well, I will think that uh, for any offload to be uh, put into the, the hardware, the, the packet uh, needs to go through the software first and uh, I can't imagine there that uh, it will be uh, out of order uh, after after the, the offload itself. Uh, but um, I don't think that uh, there uh, this new architecture increases this chance. If this chance already existed before, uh, it should be the same after. Uh, the, um, the parallelism with the dispatch between multiple uh, uh, offload threads means that it's all it's always the same thread that manages the, the offloading. And uh, as such, uh, there is no um, out of order issues or change in the in the way multiple offloads will be managed uh, one after the other. Great, uh, thanks for that answer. Uh, we don't seem to have uh, other questions uh, in uh, in the uh, coming in from the Q and A. So. I think we're all done. Uh, let me uh, thank you uh, one more time. And uh, since this is uh, the 